Hey, my YouTube friends, I am beyond excited that you're here today with me. And I love, love, love being here for you. Um, the commitment and dedication, you know, we're all dealing with someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, or we work in the field and there is so much work to be done. And it seems like every time you turn around, you're hearing about a new drug or a new idea or some new techniques. And I just want to applaud you for coming and spending this brief time with me. Um, I am Deborah Costu. I am a dementia specialist. I have been in this field for way longer than I wish to admit, but a long time. And people call me the dementia whisperer, which I think is phenomenal. Um, I have a huge, huge, huge success, especially when it comes to behaviors and communication. So getting that message in, uh, getting it to stick, getting results, getting your person to do what you need them to do or want them to do, um, giving you a break, getting rid of your stress. Yeah, that's my specialty. You came to the right place. Today, I want to talk a little bit about something that I think is really, really cool, but um, June is Brain Health Month. Um, I just kind of discovered that by accident the other day. I was like, oh, it is? Okay, great. So let's shoot a video on brain health. So it's Brain Health Month is June. And um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to get a healthier, happier brain, right? Because there's a lot of things that we can do to make our brain healthier and happier. Um, so the brain is only three pounds. It's only three pounds. It's really not all that big, but it certainly takes an awful lot of our, um, of our energy and our, uh, oxygen and our nutrients and things like that. So our brain runs at a really, really, really high, high dosage, if you will. I don't know. It takes a lot of fuel. That's it. it takes a lot of fuel to run that brain. So today I want to talk a little bit about, about that and how to keep that brain happy and healthy. Cause man, if we don't have our brain, like what, what do we have? Right? So we have to really take care of this, this tissue up here. So I, uh, I have been teaching about the brain and educating people for a tremendous amount of time. And what I found is that we, we've we learned off and on over our lifetimes about healthy diets, right? Exercise, things like that for our heart. And it just so happens that what's good for the heart is also good for the brain. So keep that in mind. It's not as hard as you may think it is, right? So what's good for the heart is also good for our brain. So it was long said when I first started learning about this disease, it was said that you could not regrow brain cells, that you could not rejuvenate brain cells um, and the brain neurons. But that actually is not true. Uh, they have discovered in recent years that you can rejuvenate brain cells and you can regrow neurons in the brain and you can do this at later life. It can be done. So, but how do you do that? Right. And some of the things I'm going to tell you, please, please, please do not torture your loved one by making them do all of these things. Because a lot of these things we can start maybe as preventative, but a lot of these things I do not want you doing to your loved one with dementia. Okay. There are certain things that these would be just torturous, inhumane, elder abuse. Do not, do not, do not do it. Okay. So this video is going to be both about your person with dementia, maybe helping them with their brain cells because they're already kind of losing a lot of them. You're not going to make like this huge impact. So please don't think that this is like a cure. You're going to go from my mom is having all these difficulties that if I put these in place, she won't have difficulties anymore. That's not at all what I'm saying. That's not at all what, and you can't even maintain. All right. So 
this is probably more like preventative for like younger people who want to try to not get to that point. Um, but so promise me, in fact, put in the chat, I promise I will not torture my person with dementia. I promise I will not force them to do these things. Okay. Cause very, very, very important. All right. So, um, <laughs> the brain feeds off of glucose or ketones. That's what the brain feeds off of. That's the fuel that keeps the brain going, glucose and ketones. But the brain prefers ketones over glucose because glucose is just sugar. And sugar is not really good for the brain, but the ketones are. So what you want to do is kind of reduce the glucose, but increase the ketones. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by doing a low carb diet. Not as hard as you would think. Seriously, not as hard as you would think to do low uh, carbs, which is sort of a keto diet, right? Um, so that's number one. So the fuel that the brain really loves is the ketones. So you can increase your ketones by number one, lowering your carbs. And because carbs actually gunk up the brain, it, they're actually bad. Carbs are bad for the brain. Um, but things like fatty fish oils, omega-3s, those are really, really good for the brain. So you can up those. You could even get the supplements. There's omega fatty three supplements, which I actually just put on my grocery list. I'm going to start doing that. Um, MCT oil. I've tried that. I didn't really see much of an effect, but a lot of people swear by it. So it's worth a try. It's something that's not awful and it's pretty easy to do. Um, but some other really important things are, uh, sleep. The brain loves good quality sleep, really, really good quality sleep. And what happens is if you go to bed and get up at the same time, it's so like a really good schedule is really good for the brain because the brain wants about seven to eight hours of quality sleep, not just sleep, quality sleep. And so when you have that, that deeper sleep, that's when the brain can actually do this. It's like a, it's like a flush. What, what the heck was the name of that flush? The, the brain actually does like this cleanse and, um, there's this thing called the blood brain barrier in the brain. And it's like, it's kind of like, think of it kind of like a brick wall, right? And where those little grout marks in between, that's where the stuff can get in and out into the brain and out of the brain. They're very, very tiny. So the brain only lets in certain things. It's to protect the brain. But the brain does this like a flush, like a cleanse during our deepest sleep. And what it does is it filters out all that stuff out of those little tiny holes. It's so cool. It's so, so cool. All right. So sleep. So uh, ketones, low carb, get some quality sleep. That's number. Those are the first couple. The next one is um, intermittent fasting, which again, do not starve your person with dementia. I'm talking more for like you and me, younger, whatever. Intermittent step of fasting can help regenerate brain cells cold therapy, like those ice baths or turning the shower on cold at the end, just for like a second or two to shock you. Um, but again, do not do that to your person with dementia. If you do, I'm going to hunt you down. Don't do that. But for you and me, we can try that. Um, the omega-3 and the really good one though, that you maybe can do with your person with maybe can do with your person with dementia is exercise. But this exercise has to be kind of aerobic, right? It's got to get the heart pounding. What you want to do is get that um, rich oxygenated blood up into the brain helps to feed it. Very, very, very cool. The next one is heat therapy. Now, your person with dementia may actually enjoy heat therapy because they're always cold, right? So a sauna, hot tub, jacuzzi, that can be uh, stimulating enough to help regrow or regenerate brain cells. Um, vitamin B1, thiamine, these can help with the inflammation in the brain and reduce stress. 
And speaking about stress, the lower the stress level, that can help as well. So meditating, maybe we should try meditating with our person with dementia, right? Put on one of those really great videos. I have a few of them in my phone um, that I've saved over the years that I really, really like these meditations when I'm having like a really stressed out. I'm not a really good meditator and I've got a long ways to go, but I do find it very relaxing sometimes. Um, probiotics can prove to be good. So your gut health can also be important for your brain. Um, sunlight, exposure to sunlight. So listen, you could do the exercise outside with your person with dementia and you get the vitamin uh, D with the sunlight. So light therapy, um, zinc would be a good one. And um, another really important thing to talk about is um, lowering, lowering that stress level, lowering the stress level. Um, oh, and sex. Sex is really good. Sex is really, really good for your brain. Worth repeating, right? Um, so it's very, very interesting how we can make some of these changes and actually regrow brain cells and brain neurons. Very cool. Learning something new, learning something that takes brain effort, um, like learning a new language, um, taking up a musical instrument or taking a course like the Certified Master Dementia Strategist course. You could take my course and regrow some new brain cells. So there you have it. June is Brain Health Month. I wish you a healthy brain for now and forever. Please say hi to me down in the comments. If you're interested in learning more about the Certified Master Dementia Strategist course, because I can teach you everything I know in four days, and it can significantly change your relationship with your loved one. It will change how you talk to them, how you get results from them, and um, it can make your life way less stressful, which can help you regrow brain cells too. But um, just book a call or visit our website and hit the book a call button to talk to one of our dementia coaches to see how that we can help you because that's why we're here. We're here to help you and we want to help you. So give us a call, uh, shoot us an email, book a call on the website, and hopefully we'll see you in the next class. And by the way, there's usually a waiting list. So every single class does sell out. So don't hesitate because every time you wait, you got to wait at least, if not more, another month to get in. So you don't want to wait and wait and wait and keep putting it off and putting off because then you're just delaying your success. So give us a call. I'm Deborah Costu. Thanks for joining me. And don't ever forget, together we can.